So in this problem, we have a uniform rod of mass m and length l. And we know that it has a moment of inertia about one of its endpoints equal to one third m l squared. At least that's what we're told in the textbooks. So we'd like to determine what is the moment of inertia of that same rod about its center. And we're going to do that using three different methods. So first of all, we can do this using the parallel axis theorem. Let's remind ourselves what this theorem is about. Parallel axis theorem is a theorem that relates the moment of inertia about an object's center of mass plus uh, the mass of the object. And if we multiply that times the displacement squared, that will give us the moment of inertia around some other axis of rotation. So in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to say that the moment of inertia around the center, the center of mass, uh, if we displace this to an endpoint, that is to say by, a, by an amount delta x, then we can figure out what the moment of inertia would be about this new axis. In our case, what we want to do is solve for what the moment of inertia is about its center of mass. So let's rearrange this and solve for moment of inertia center of mass is equal to I other, that is to say the moment of inertia about the endpoint, and we'll subtract off the mass times the amount that we have been displaced. So I other, that's the moment of inertia about the endpoint. That is what we're told one third m l squared. We can subtract off therefore the mass and the amount, the distance that we have displaced. Well, if this length is L, the full length of the rod, then the amount of distance that I've displaced is L over two. Don't forget though, we are trying to remember to square those quantities. That's what the formula tells us. So what we're supposed to do is do one third ML squared and subtract off one quarter of ML squared. If you find the common denominator here, four twelfths minus three twelfths will give you one twelfth for the answer, the moment of inertia uh, of, a, of a thin rod about its center. We can do this a different way, however. So use the fact that the moment of inertia is additive. In other words, we can think of the moment of inertia for this rod about its center, that's equal to the moment of inertia of one rod which is rotated about its end, that rod will have a length of L over two and a mass of M over two, and add to that a moment of inertia of another rod, also length L over two, also length M over two, rotating around its end. And we already have a formula for the moment of inertia of a rod about its end, so we should be able to do this. So what are we going to do? We're going to write this as the moment of inertia for a rod, one half, sorry, one third, the mass of that rod, well now the mass that we're interested in is m over two, and then we multiply that by the length of the rod squared, well the length of this half rod is L over two squared, and we'll add that to the same amount because we've just broken this up into two equal rods, m over two, L over two quantity squared. What we end up with effectively is two times this stuff, so this is two times one third m over two, L squared over four, one of those factors of two cancels, we're ending up with three over four in the denominator, and so we end up with a one twelfth M L squared, which is consistent with the previous result. Finally, can we work this out with calculus? We definitely can, but we're gonna have to introduce a quantity, which is the linear mass density. So let me remind you what that means. The linear mass density is the amount of mass per unit length in a little piece. We're going to give that symbol lambda. And what is it? It's defined as the ratio of the little bit of mass divided by a little bit of length. And in general, lambda is going to be a function of position because linear mass density can get bigger or smaller throughout the length of a rod. But if the rod is uniform, then in the very special case here, special, this turns out to just be the mass of the rod divided by its length. So we're going to keep that in our back pocket. How do we work out what the moment of inertia is? Well, to work it out, moment of inertia would have to in general be thought of as the sum of a bunch of different little tiny masses times their 
distances squared from the axis in question, but we're going to break this up into such small bits that this turns into an integral. So this integral turns into little bits of mass, so little dm's, times their distance from the axis squared, and starting from one end to another, or doing the entire integration. What we have here is a rod. The axis will be located here, and we need to set up some coordinates so that we can do this integral. Let's let this be the x-axis, and let's let the center be zero. That means this end here will be L over 2, and this end here will be at minus L over 2. And we're interested in measuring the distance from the axis to any particular point. This point over here is at distance x away from the axis. So when this turns into the integral that we're going to do, we're going to write this as dm. dm can be thought of in terms of lambda times dx. So this is lambda times dx. I've replaced the little dm, that's what this is. r, the distance away, is simply x, it's x squared. And what are my limits of integration? I'm starting at minus l over 2 and ending at l over 2. So everything is there and ready to go, and now it's just a matter of doing the calculus. Special thing for us, lambda is constant, so I'll factor that out of the integral. And you see all I've got to do is an integral of dx x squared. You can write that in another order if you'd prefer. Feel free to write this as x squared dx, as many calculus students prefer. Minus l over 2, l over 2. Upon doing that integral, we've got lambda. We've got x to the third power over 3. Evaluate it at l over 2 and minus l over 2. Just be very careful about your minus signs. At this stage, we've got lambda over 3. And now we'll evaluate this integral. This is L over 2 cubed minus a minus L over 2 cubed. Because of this is cubes, the minus signs will end up canceling and this will be additive. This turns out to be lambda over 3. Let's keep in mind lambda is just M over L. So this is M over 3L times L cubed over 8 plus L cubed over 8. So in brackets we have L cubed over 4. There's a power, of, there's a factor of 3 in the denominator that's going to give us a 12. So in summary what we're going to end up with is M L cubed over 12 L, which is simply 1 over 12 M L squared, confirming our result.